back to my channel and to Kaylin's seven days of Christmas. We're on day five already, I cannot believe it. Can we get a little cheers for me making this prayer, please? <laughs> I'm only messing, I've actually had such a great week doing this. It's been a little bit harder than I hoped. There's been a few late nights, but honestly, all your comments and messages have been so lovely and they've made that all worth it. So thank you so much if you've left a comment or watched or sent me a nice message. I really, really, really appreciate it. But moving on to today's video, as you can see, I only have eyeshadow and lips on at the moment, which makes me look so crazy, I know. But that only means one thing, I'm doing an updated foundation routine and how I contour. I thought this would be a good video to do for a few different reasons. Number one, I get so many questions about contour and the products I use and the techniques and things like that. So I just thought that this might be helpful for those of you asking me those questions. And I also thought with all the Christmas nights out and things like that coming up, you might be able to follow this along when you're doing your makeup and maybe pick up a few new techniques for applying foundation and things like that. So yeah, without further ado, I hope you find this helpful and let's get right into it. So as usual, I've zoomed you in so that you can see everything clearly and my freckly face very close up, too close up. But anyway, I'm going to start off with a strobe cream. This is the one from Penny's. Not gonna lie, I do really prefer the one from MAC. I've been using this for the last few months now and I've been using the MAC one for years and I must say the MAC one is better. But I actually like this for just applying before a liquid highlighter because I find it feels like more of a moisturizer. So I'm gonna be using this one today and I just apply that with my fingers. Obviously wash your hands before you do anything because germs and things like that. But yeah, I just apply that straight on with my fingers and all over the skin, not too much, but just to give my skin a little bit of a wake up call, I guess. Um, I just think this gives it a nice little base before you start and yeah, sets you up nicely. The next thing I like to go in with is my primer, which is the Stila One Step Correct. I find this amazing. I've been using it for quite a while now and it's just really good for brightening the skin and kind of taking down any coloration you might have, so redness or anything like that. So I usually only apply this to certain parts of my face. So I put it to my nose because I find that that gets a little bit oily throughout the day. So that would keep the makeup in place better and a bit on my chin and a bit on my forehead. They're the kind of places I focus on. So the T-zone say for instance. And a little bit goes a very long way also. So you don't have to be too generous with that. And yeah, that just kind of keeps the oil at bay there because I do have a little bit of an oily skin type. My skin can be normal-ish, but I do notice oiliness on my T-zone and a bit of dehydration everywhere else. So I find them two a good mix together. So the moisturizer first to just set up your skin and then put in your primer in places that you find that gets oily throughout the day. Moving on to foundation. Today I'm gonna to be using two because I kind of have a little bit of tan left over, but it's like not fully dark. So I'm kind of trying to mix and match so that I get my right color. So I'm gonna be using the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation. This is the stick foundation that I talked about in yesterday's video where I went to Sephora. Honestly, so, so good. So I have this in a lighter color. I have this in porcelain because I like to wear this on a daily basis. And then I'm gonna be using my Makeup Forever HD stick, which is the one I probably will use for all my nights out over Christmas. I just think this is fantastic. And I have that in the shade 127. So yeah, so good. I talked about that in yesterday's video as well. So I'm just gonna kind of do stripes on my face of both of these, one after the other, so they mix and make color that kind of matches me somehow. <laughs> so I usually just apply it straight from the pan and I just simply do stripes on my face, as I said. So one, one, and one. Again on this side. I apply quite a bit <laughs> because you know I like my coverage. And for the hourglass in, I literally just put a stripe where I didn't put the stripe of the other one. And I don't always use this much foundation, just on occasions when I'm kind of stuck between a colour, as I said. Moral of the story, make sure you have your tan done or else scrub it off. <laughs> and yeah, now I look absolutely mental. But we're going to get blending. To blend it out, I'm going to be using a Real Techniques contour brush. I really like the effect that this gives me. And for my favourite trick of all, I'm going to be putting a bit of my Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops in the shade Moonlight on the brush. And this is what's going to give me that beautiful, glowy, glowy skin. So yeah, I literally just put it up and drop a bit onto the brush. I usually do like maybe one to two drops. And then you can always go back and get more after. And I just kind of dip the excess off on my hand and then go in with it. And as you can see, it blends so, so, so nicely. It really, really helps it to just blend out and look flawless, as well as dewy and just really, really nice. So that's that side now. Honestly, like nothing else makes my foundation look like this. I love that trick. 
and when you feel like the product has kind of gone off the brush just dip on the excess of your hand then and off you go again I love the kind of goldy effect it has as well you can definitely use that as highlighter also just on the tip here I actually don't really do that um, I usually just use it like this but you totally could and there you go guys it's actually such a quick way of doing your foundation that's why I love the sticks so much they blend so so quickly do you ever find with liquid like I, don't get me wrong I love liquid foundations too and there's some that I absolutely swear by but I find it takes me longer to apply a liquid foundation than it does a stick I really want to get some more actually they just blend so so quickly and you get this really nice flawless finish in less than a minute okay moving on to concealer I'm going to be using my Tarte Shape Tape I've spoken about this before I think I'm obsessed with this concealer I've had it now since the summer and I think I've used it non-stop it's winning in the concealer race in my drawer right now <laughs> but yeah it's quite hard to get your hands in it though it's only available in Ulta as far as I know it was like an exclusive partnership with them but if you can get your hands in it I definitely would and I'm going to be applying that with my Real Techniques Beauty Blender which is looking a little worse for wear, not going to lie I have a new one but I haven't opened it yet but it still does the job and I just wet that under the sink there a second ago but again you can use Fix Plus Spray to wet them which is really handy too and I love using this for concealer because I just feel like it gives a really flawless finish under the eye which can be quite hard to achieve so I apply this straight from the brush as well and I literally just go under the eye going all the way up past my wing and again on this side as you can see I bring it down a small bit as well towards my cheek and then another little bit on my nose, chin and forehead and I actually apply a little bit under here as well just find it emphasizes my contour a little bit more and there you go and then I just blend it all out with this bad boy I use like a tapping motion I don't like stroke it, I just tap it into the skin. Sorry, I forgot to say I use the shade Fair. Just love the consistency of this concealer. It's quite thick and full coverage, but it doesn't feel like thick or heavy under the eye and it doesn't crease and kind of bulk up like some concealers might do. So yeah, I really love it. And the Wet Beauty Blender just pushes it into the skin so lovely. Okay, I'm beginning to look a little bit more normal, thank God. So now it is time for cream contour. I always do my cream contour before I go into my powder because it just makes more sense. Always cream before powder, always. So if you do your foundation and you like to set it with your powder straight away, but you're thinking about doing some cream contour this Christmas, just make sure not to make that mistake. It's obviously such a habit to go into your powder straight away, but just do your cream contour first and then powder. And then it won't like bulk up and look kind of flaky and things like that. So for cream contour, I'm gonna be using this Clinique Chubby Stick. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before. I think I have in one of my favorites videos, but I've been loving this. I've been using it now, I'd say for maybe six, seven months and obsessed is not the word it's such an easy product to use and it gives such a lovely effect and really long lasting as well so yeah i just go straight in with that it's like a rolly up one i literally just put it straight on from the product wherever i want to contour so always down the cheekbones so make sure not to go too low with this guys keep it up high so feel your cheekbone and just go right underneath that and then again on this side not too low again and I usually just bring it down as far as here. So just below the cheek. I wouldn't bring it any further than that. And then I just do some up on my hairline. And then down underneath the chin. And a little bit on the nose. With the same brush I used for the foundation, I blend this out. So I literally go straight in and blend, blend, blend. With cream contour, blending will be your best friend. <laughs> So you really don't want it to look too harsh. So with this area I always blend up. Blend up onto the cheekbone. You don't want it coming down because that's not going to look contour then you want there to be definition and a clear contrast between the lighter area and the darker area. So always blend up. And again with this side. Now this is just the way I do it. I know there's loads and loads and loads of different ways you can contour so I'm not saying that this is the right way or the wrong way this is just the way I do it and I find that it works for me really well so I just thought I'd share it with you guys but if you're not doing this and you're doing something else and it's working for you then that's perfect like you're obviously doing it the right way as well so there's loads and loads and loads of different ways you can do it so whatever you feel most comfortable with and then we'll just go up here and do this really quickly just push that right into the hairline too up there you want it to look bronzed 
because the way I do my contour really is more like a bronzed way. I like it to look like I've just come back from holidays. Um, well, not that I would get a tan anyway, but you know the way. Um, so I always like to just make it super bronzy and glowy. And then I kind of intensify it with the powder afterwards. And then the nose, I just go very gently. And I blend, blend, blend. I'm still not the best at nose contouring, I'm not going to lie. But I'm trying. <laughs> And the cream contour is done, so next I like to put the powder contour straight over it. And I'm going to be using the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. I've definitely mentioned this a hundred times before, I love, love, love this. I think Eric actually just bought this today because of how much I love this and how much I talk about it. It's just a brilliant palette and I love that it has loads of different shades and light powders and dark powders. It's lasted me so, so well and it's such a lovely variety of shades. I think it's brilliant value for your money. I'm not sure the exact price but I'm going to link it below for you. I'd guess about like $50 maybe. Um, but yeah, I've already hit pan on this and this, but I've had it for so, so long. So yeah, definitely worth your money. So for today, I'm going to mix these two shades together. If I'm really, really dark for nights out, I like to use this one because it just gives you a really, really chiseled contour. But these are good for when I'm kind of light in between, you know. So I just mix them both. And I'm going to be using this MAC brush. It's the 140S. I really like this because it's nice and big. So it gives a nice bronze and contour at the same time. I just go straight over the product. I like that this is kind of tapered as well, so it kind of has a little bit of an angle. So it's like thin, but it's like nice and wide at the top. So it blends it really nicely. And as you can see there, now it's just gives a nice intense color straight away without hardly using any product. And again, I just use whatever's left over to go over the hairline. I'll go back in for some more now for the other side. And again, I like to just go under my jawline. So anywhere I've put the cream contour, really. Okay, now that we have the contour done, it is time to powder, as I said. As always, I'm going to be using my trusty Laura Mercier powder. I am obsessed with this, as I said in yesterday's video. It is brilliant for contouring, setting, everything. I just love it, guys. It is the most beautiful formula I've ever seen in a powder. And for applying it, I'm going to be using my powder and pow P050. I'm obsessed with this brush. I have not put it down. It's this really, really dense, tapered brush. And I just love it. I love using it. I just feel like it does such a great job. So let's get right into it. So I usually just dip the brush into the pot and tap off any excess. And I just place it along the areas I want to highlight and set. So, and again on this side. And don't be afraid to add a good bit of product because it'll bake it a little bit which is basically lightening the skin in certain areas. And then again, under the eye. Just right where you want to be nice and bright. And I always like to do a little bit on the forehead in kind of like a triangle. And a little bit down the nose. I usually just sprinkle a tiny bit over my lip to set it there. And then I go back in with my big brush to get rid of any excess. So this just leaves everything nice and smooth and blended and makes sure that there's no harsh lines or powder left anywhere and just gives you one last bronzy glow. And now to finish everything off guys, I'm going to be using a blush by MAC. It's in the shade Melba, one of my favourite blushes. It's a lovely peachy pink and I'm going to be using my powder and pout brush in P120. So I just put that right onto the apple of the cheek. Gives like a nice, fresh, healthy look. I never apply too much, but just enough to make me look alive. <laughs> and the very, very last step is of course highlighter. And today I'm gonna to be using my Light Infusion from Catrice Cosmetics. This is a really, really affordable one, guys. I think it's like seven or eight euro. I got this when I was home during the summer, I think it was. And yeah, it's in Light Infusion 010. So if you can pick this up, I would really recommend it. And I'm going to be using my MAC brush in 137 and wetting it with my Fix Plus spray. I always wet it just to intensify the glow. And just on the very, very top of my cheekbones is where I apply it. Can you see that? <gasps> so beautiful. I love this highlighter. It is so, so glowy. And I always like to apply a little bit on the bridge of my nose and a little bit on my forehead. Just give me that glow, you know? Extra AF. 
And there we have it guys, my full coverage foundation and contour routine. That's the exact routine I go by every time I do my makeup for an event or a night out. I just want to feel like having a very chiseled and full coverage look. So yeah, I'm going to be following that for all of Christmas. And I really hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. I'm going to zoom in now a little bit so that you can see the finished look in a little more detail. Thank you so, so much for watching. And again, I really hope that you found this helpful and useful information. Please don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I will see you in my next video tomorrow. Bye.